Is, is it actually Dr. Alison Mace with me? Te technically. I always feel weird. I don't know if that's because, like, because I'm in med school, I feel like a bit of an imposter, but then everyone else who's graduated and just stays yeah. dentist uses doctor as well, so... Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr. James Gill, along with Dr. Alison Mace for another Dental Myths video. Now, my wife has recently, what's the phrase, spawned? No, uh, given birth, that was it. She's just given birth. And we had a friend who was also pregnant at the same time who swears blind that um, the child took the calcium out of their teeth. Now, I know that there's going to be plenty of calcium that's come out of the bones. One of the reasons we say, you know, take vitamin D, have calcium. But could the benign pelvic tumour, could the fetus have drawn calcium from the teeth? No, ab absolutely not. I didn't think so. Yeah, that is one of the, the most common myths that we tend to see when we work in practice with dental patients who are pregnant, is that they'll often come in and say, oh, the baby's sucked all the calcium out of my teeth, but the way that the teeth sit within the gums, they're supported by a ligament and that's, that's it. Um, the baby can't really get any calcium out of the teeth. It's more likely that it's got the calcium out of the surrounding bones, which may have weakened things, but having a baby isn't going to suck all that calcium out and increase your risk of dental decay in that way. Okay, so thankfully uh, it sounds like there's nothing going on with that. But can pregnancy change things with regard to oral health? Yeah, it can do. So with pregnancy, obviously, you've got the, the massive hormonal change that comes along with it. Um, and that does increase your, your risk of inflammation. Um, so things like gum disease, um, where you where it's all dependent on inflammation, um, the change in hormones can then increase your risk of developing it. Okay. I mean, is that a very common thing? I mean, from my perspective, we, you know, we try to say, you know, we want to see pregnant women whenever they've got a concern and things like that, and we, we have the midwives in the practice. I don't recall seeing many, you know, ladies who've come in and said, oh, they've got problems with bleeding gums. Maybe they're all going directly to the dentist, but I do see a lot of patients come in with dental problems. Yeah, so we do tend to see a lot of them directly in practice. Um, what it will mainly do to start with is cause the more reversible form of gum disease, so gingivitis, which is slightly swollen gums, bleeding when you're brushing your teeth. Um, it might be a little bit painful, um, but the bleeding is kind of mainly when you're brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. That's totally reversible by just keeping up with good, good oral hygiene, so brushing your teeth twice a day, um, trying not to snack too much between meals. I know that might be quite difficult if you are pregnant. It's quite difficult if you're a working doctor. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite difficult generally. Um. Actually, since, since our very first video, I have tried really hard not to snack as much during the day. Uh, you know, so it, you know, at least you've changed, uh, had an impact, not necessarily changed, you've had an impact on somebody's dietary habits, certainly. Yeah, well, ho hopefully it's not just you who's had, who's had the impact. Um, but yeah, so things like brushing the teeth twice a day will help. Um, if they're concerned, always see a dentist. So with pregnant women in the UK, um, especially with the NHS, they are entitled to free dental care from the moment they get become pregnant um, to a year after they've given birth. Um, so it's a really good way to get access to care if you need it. Actually, with that then, um, not to put you on the spot here, but quite frequently in the areas that I work, there are deprived populations and they say they have difficulty accessing a dentist. I never know how to answer that question. If somebody ha has difficulty getting access to an NHS dentist, is there a telephone number? What, 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 what advice can I give them? Yeah, it's, it's really hard at the moment in the UK. Um, we're seeing more and more dentists leaving NHS practice and that's not because they don't want to work in the NHS but it's because of the way the contracts run mm -hmm. so that dentists become get paid it isn't sustainable to work in um, which is really unfortunate because you're left in a horrible position as a dentist in that you you get into it because you want to help people and you want to improve their oral health but you also need to earn money absolutely to, to live uh, and it's become quite hard to do that sustainably working in the NHS. So I do appreciate it's, it's really hard to get an NHS appointment. Um, 
you can look online for NHS dentists who are accepting patients. Okay, so so that so it would be listed as, as people as dental surgeries for them to contact who would accept, rather than just these are all the dentists in the area. Sometimes um, that's theoretically how it should be done. Um, you can go online and find a list of all the NHS dentists in your area, um, but then often it's a case of ringing around a lot of them to see if anyone has an opening. Um, if you're in pain or if you've got like a facial swelling or you're concerned, you can always ring 111 and then they can get you in contact with an emergency dentist who will see you. Um, but then, yeah, I do appreciate it's really hard to get an NHS appointment. To be fair, the NHS emergency dental service, that is actually rather good. You know, they, they tend to pick up a lot of the patients we have with dental abscesses and, and, and things like that, that that need to be sorted out, you know, quickly. So, you know, if in doubt, Although you know I, the GP is not a dental practitioner, and there's important legal things there, yeah. um, you know, if you're still worried, call us. At least the receptionist will be able to direct you to you know one 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 at least, and we might be able to help you get in to see somebody somewhere. Yeah, and likewise, if you've got a, a facial swelling that's particularly bad, so if it's affecting your airway, so if you're struggling to breathe, if you're struggling to swallow your own spit, if you're struggling to open your mouth wide, or if you're feeling really unwell in yourself. Then, then you need to head to A&E and ideally look for an A&E that has the maxillofacial department because that's the one, that's the department you want to be treated by. So correct me if I'm wrong with this, but as a rule of thumb, uh, uh, a max fax department, that's going to be in the bigger hospitals rather than DGHs, isn't it? Um, you'll often find max fax in the bigger hospitals, but there is also present in a lot of DGHs. Okay. Um, so sometimes it might just take a quick Google to just Google the hospital, see where it is. If you're really concerned, you can just go to your normal A&E department, and if they don't have MaxFax there, they'll refer you on to a hospital that does have it. Um, so you, you will always get care if needed. Uh, it might just take a little bit longer. Okay, so there we go. So uh, ladies, pregnant ones, A, your teeth are safe, um, and B, we've got dentists like Alison out there who are going to be able to help you keep those teeth going even more and now because now it's free for you so you know I think we've definitely learned one. With dental health there's a lot to be said for using the appropriate tools. The same can be said for your follicular health. As a result this video has been sponsored by Hansen Shaving. One of the things Hansen highlight with their razor being just a single blade is that there's a reduction in the frequency of the occurrence of ingrowing hairs which actually I see in the clinic with a surprising frequency as ingrowing hairs depending on their location can lead to cellulitis or abscess formation and in both cases resulting in the patient making an appointment with their GP. Personally, I was really impressed to find out Hansen started out as an aerospace machine shop and made parts for the Mars Rover and the ISS. However, it was the pandemic that forced them to pivot, as a result they ended up making razors. Now, personally, I find that resilience very impressive. But it does mean that their aerospace background means they're confident when they say there's less movement in their blade due to greater blade support compared to their competitors. Why does this matter for your skin health? The increased support means there's less vibration or flex during shaving, which in turn reduces the risk of skin irritation and razor burns. If you want to try Hanson shaving, check out the link in the description where they're very proud to offer a 100 day trial or money, ba or money back guarantee. So I, um, I really enjoy these because I'll be perfectly honest, you know, I'm not the one who's had to do the vast majority of the brain work. So I actually get to practically be like you guys. I get to be the audience for a little bit. Um, I read something really quite frightening for someone who doesn't have great teeth that there is a strong relationship between um, you know, dental hygiene, dental caries, and heart disease in later life. I mean, am I going to have a heart attack tomorrow? Um, so, I mean, I can't tell you that because I don't know anything about your medical I, history. I'm not 40 yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there is a link between gum disease and heart disease. Um, it's all to do with the bacteria and the inflammation that, that comes along with it. Um, so with gum disease, it's all to do with the, the plaque bacteria that sit on your teeth. And in things like gum disease, so periodontitis, the, the kind of more irreversible form, it's more likely that you'll get bacteria getting into your bloodstream because of the nature of the fact that the blood vessels surrounding your teeth and your gums are all more permeable. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier for them to get into your system. So as all your blood goes via your heart, 
that bacteria is getting into your heart. And then it will also get into all of the smaller blood vessels around your heart and cause localised inflammation around them. And then because of that localised inflammation, it's more likely to cause things like heart attacks, strokes, um, and they're kind of the two, two major ones. Okay, so it's more almost sort of the endocarditis type things rather than this person has had a bad diet so they're going to have a heart attack. In that case, I'm a little bit more reassured on that. I, I, I don't have a great diet in terms of the amount of sugar and sweets that I can assume, but I have a good diet in the sense that I get easily my 30 different fruits and veg a week. So I'm trying to look after my heart as much as I can. Oh, you're doing better than me, then. <laughs> Hey, it, it's, a, it's a work of effort. There's a, there's a chart on the fridge to keep on ticking them through. Uh, speaking of diet, um, there is also a link between diabetes and oral health as well. Because mm -hmm. um, I know with diabetes, we often think of type 2 being diet related. Um, but then because of that, it can also cause links with gum disease and things like that. Okay, so let me flip it the other way around then. Have you um, been in a situation where you've seen a patient, you know, you've been uh, dealing with their health and actually suggested that they speak to us and find that they've got diabetes off the back of your work? Yeah, so it's not uncommon for patients to come into dental practice and we often, if they come in with a new diagnosis of, of periodontal disease, um, if they don't have a diagnosis of diabetes, we will often recommend that they see their GP. Wow. Okay. For, for a blood test for um, an HbA1c level mm -hmm. um, because often things like developing gum disease or even kind of the serious dental abscesses can be an indicator that they do actually have underlying diabetes. To be fair, maybe this is something I need to think about changing my practice. So we've got lots of diabetics in the practice and some patients with massively high, high HbA1c's, you know, some in the hundreds. Mm. Um, I never think to send them your way. I always just think, right, you know, I've got to sort the hormones, I've got to, you know, stop them having a heart attack, etc. But I've never even thought about that. Would, would that be something that would be useful? Or by the time somebody's got an HbA1c like that, are you likely to be seeing them for problems anyway? Um, it depends. They may not have accessed dental care at that point. But if someone does have type 2 diabetes, we do recommend that they do see their dentist regularly. They'll often be on more of a three-month recall interval um, because type 2 diabetes can make your gum disease worse um, because of the increasing levels of sugar in your blood. Um, that can lead to worse inflammation in your mouth. And presumably, if you're getting a dental abscess or something like that, with the sugar, it's just going to be magnified so much as well. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And because of the impact on your immune system as well, it's a lot less able to kind of get rid of it on its own or even decrease that swelling. Mm. Honestly, I, I, I mean this completely genuinely, I always learn something every time we do one of these. And actually, as daft as it sounds, connecting diabetes with dental health was a connection I had not made until today. Yeah. See, you don't have to be bright to go to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is a big link. Um. Okay. I mean, in, in terms, of, we were talking about there about the, the heart health in terms of endocarditis and things like that. Um, have you yourself seen any patients with endocarditis which you think were connected to their dental health? Um, none that have been directly caused by it. With my work in the hospital, we're often asked to review patients with endocarditis mm -hmm. um, to do a dental review on them to see is there any kind of potential. Um, teeth that could have caused this because the bacteria like I said, can get into your bloodstream which can then cause the vegetations to develop on your heart. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way that if someone's due to have a heart valve replaced we're often asked to do a dental review then as well because it's better to sort out any teeth that may cause issues rather than have the heart valve replaced and then have an increased risk of developing endocarditis. Okay, uh, th this is one of the things that sometimes I miss being in GP land. I'm a little bit away from the, the sharp edge of things and I, I don't even think about you know, endocarditis and teeth and things you have to do to prep the patient. It's just, I see the patient with endocarditis, it's like, wow, you're rare. Um, oh dear, let's you know hand you on to somebody else because that's well outside my remit. So that, that's really interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not it's not hugely common, 
but yeah. you're more at risk if you've had a heart valve replaced mm-hmm. uh, or if you've got a congenital heart defect that's kind of when you're more at risk if you're if you're fitting well it's less of a risk but that's not a reason to not keep on top of your good oral hygiene okay let's let's bring it back and tee one up for everybody because you know I say I've got uh, I've got bad teeth in my mouth um, we're talking about diabetics you know patients whose teeth might be affected if you are worried then about your teeth um, is a standard you know box you know bog standard toothbrush reasonable should we be spending the money on an ultrasonic toothbrush what should we do i think we should watch the next video <laughs> fair enough i like that one so i think that's the, that's a perfectly good place to uh, leave it and tee you up for the next one so um yeah join us shortly because we're gonna step away from the chairs and do something a little bit more interesting see you in the next one cheerio <laughs>